In this episode of Loops FX, I want to show you how the sampler in Recordbox DJ works. So let's do this. Shana players and welcome to another episode of Loops FX. My name is Bergvall or Bergvall as it's pronounced in Sweden and today I want to show you how to use the sampler in Recordbox DJ. Most of the DJs I know doesn't use the sampler in Recordbox DJ. Mostly because they don't grab the full potential of it or doesn't even know how it works. But the few DJs I know that use the sampler loads up a horn or a cow or something like that and then they go bananas with it. What they don't know, or can imagine, is that you, for example, can load up a drum loop and then re-drum a track that doesn't have the beat that you prefer. It could be an old school track, but even new tracks lack a beat that's danceable. You can also load up a snippet of an a cappella and throw it on a part of the track that you are playing that's suitable for that cappella. It's called a needle loop. The possibilities are endless, as long as you know how the sample works and got ideas enough. I can help you how to use it, but the ideas are your work. But before we begin, I must remind you to hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon if you want to be reminded every time I post a new video for you. My channel is very new and I got almost no subscriber, so I'm bribing you to subscribe to my channel. Because if you do, I will send you a link to a promo package with tracks that I have produced more or less. The link goes through YouTube's message service. But if your settings on YouTube are that you don't want to show uh, the channels you are subscribing to, I can see you and therefore not send you anything. But enjoy. Welcome back. The sampler feature is only available if you have bought the software Recordbox DJ or on a subscription like me. To get into the sampler, you have to switch to performance mode and then check the box next to the word sampler in the head row. A new panel is now showing and you close it the same way you open it. You have 16 samples per bank and you switch through the banks here. As you can see, I got several samples already loaded in most of the slots in bank 1. Let's listen to them. As you can hear, I got a couple of hits and I use them sometimes to emphasize the end of a transition. Next to the banks, you have the output selection. If the sample shall go through a dedicated channel or deck, you press the number of the channel. If it doesn't matter the output, then select the letter A for all. Normally, I always choose deck 4 as my sample deck, but I haven't connected any controller mix or external sound card to my computer right now, so the sound you hear goes through the max internal sound card. Therefore, I can't select any output right now. Further right down the row, you see the letter Q, and that stands for quantize. And that means that even if you hit the sample a little bit of the beat, Recordbox DJ will correct it for you. And if you are a beginner sampler user, I think that's a good idea. So we leave it on. Many DJs don't like the BPM sync because they say it's kind of cheating. But try play a sample loop on a track with a different BPM and not using BPM sync. It's not like you have the ability to correct the loop if it's drifting off beat. And I play a lot of loops that are slower or faster. I will demonstrate that further down this tutorial. Most only if you want to sample to rule the tempo, but I never used it. Now it's selected because you don't have any tracks playing in one of the decks. The next button switches you to the OSC sampler, the oscillator sampler. Many of Pioneer's controllers like DDJ are set. If you hear this Pioneer, please send me one of those. Have built-in buttons for the feature on the hardware, easy to access. More on that on a tutorial to come. The minus and plus buttons are for the BPM when master is selected. Then comes the recording section. This is quite good. If you like to record what you are playing with the sampler, this is it. First you select the pattern you would like to record onto, and you have 8 to choose from. Let's select pattern 1. Then how many bars the recording will go for? Let's do 2 bars. Then you arm the recording by pressing the red round button. But it doesn't start recording until you press the first sample. Here we go.
When you're done, you press either the record button again to stop recording what you're playing and the recording will start playing at once. Or press the play button to stop the recording and then you have to press the play button again to play the recording. In my head, the order should be the other way around, but you get used to it. If you like new masterpiece, then you press save button and it ends up in your collection. You can then drag it into an empty slot on the sampler. If it's not empty, you have to press the eject button that appears when you hover the mouse over the sample. You can also play that weird thing as a normal sample in one of the decks. If you press the little X on pattern, the recorded pattern will be deleted from the recording slot, but not from the collection if you have saved the recording. I have found seven strange things with the sampler that I'm going to write to the support about right after I finish this episode. Here's number one. All samples that are marked with sync or slot sync as Pioneer says are not recorded into recorder. You can see which samples are selected sync by pressing the edit button that appears when hovering the mouse over the sample. You close the edit window with the edit button again. Let me show you. Here's a drum loop and it's set to sync. Now let's try to record it. We try with the loop stopped. Nothing. Let's remove the sync and then press record. There it is. Recorded. Strange thing number two is, it's darn hard to read the word pattern, especially when you're in a club. The color is bad contrast, it's too dim. I would prefer the word pattern yellow when not recorded and green when recorded. The mute and erase button are strange thing number three and four. Nothing happens when you press them. I would imagine that the mute button could mute the sample from the slot and erase button remove the sample from the sample slot, but no, nothing. Until you press the play on recorder. Then the mute and erase button activates and their function works. It's meant to mute and erase the samples that are in the recorded pattern, but why not make them work always? Next to them you find a metronome button and the volume for the tick on a metronome. When you play a sample and you want it to stop, then just hold shift button on the keyboard and press the play button again. I have already mentioned that beneath the mouse hovering, you have several options like mute and eject, unload the sample from the slot but also edit. If you look at the first icon on my samples, some of them have an arrow facing right and some of them have an arrow going round. The arrow facing right makes the sample a one shot, meaning that the sample will end when it stops. The arrow going round means that it's a loop. It starts playing all over again when it hits the end, but there's also gate mode. It's like one shot, but as soon as you release the play button, the sample stops. Then you have a button with the letters MT, and that stands for Master Tempo. That means that the key of the sample will remain the same even if the tempo of the sample changes. If you look to the right of the MT, you see a dim down sync button. You can't press it. If you get the loop sample and press edit, we can select sync. Here's a strange thing number five. Why can't a one shot be synced? If I load up a build up with drums for a bar or two, I would like to have that one shot in sync, but I can't. I have to choose loop and then sync. But when the buildup is done, I have to remember to stop it or it will start all over again. And making a lot of things at the same time during a mix could stress you out if you have to think about that one as well. Underneath those buttons are the gain so you can change the volume of the samples and BPM by adjusting that. You can also adjust the start point back and forth, but keep in mind it can make the samples out of tempo. You can also change the tempo to half the BPM and double. And in the middle of the sample panel, you have the gain for the whole sampler section. Now it's time for strange thing number six. Where is the save button? If I have loaded a couple of samples into bank one, I would like to save that set and perhaps load it another time. I used to play with Tractor Pro and I loaded sample sets back and forth depending on what I wanted to do. Now that's impossible. You have to load every sample one by one. That's time consuming and nothing you would want to do during a set. Before we move on, let's do strange thing number seven. 
why can't I rename the samples in the sample slots? If I would like to enter the BPM and or the key of the samples, or a more describing name for the sample instead of the tailored track from where the sample came from. So, why should you use the sampler? For many reasons. One thing could be a read drama track that lacks a modern beat, or just a danceable beat for the dance floor. Let's take Tina Charles' I Love to Love, for example. That was the first song I danced to on my first disco in 1976. It's still a great song, but it feels a little old. It needs something to make it flow again. Let's try a modern drum loop. I know that Country Club Martin Cruz remix of Adele's Send My Love has a good part at the end with just the beats. Let's take that one. Here's a nice 8-bit drum part. Let's loop it so we can hear that the loop end fits and doesn't pop. Makes a little pop sound. No, it's good. On the right hand side of the screen, there's an arrow and there's a scissor icon. When we click on that, the orange marked loop now turns blue. That means that it has been armed for the sampler. So let's drag that blue part into available sample slot. Click on edit and change it from a one shot to a loop. Because that is what we wanted to do. And check that the sync button is blue as well. Close the edit window by pressing the edit button again and then play it to double check that it works. Stop the loop by pressing shift and play and then eject on deck B to unload the original track. We don't need that anymore. Now we search for I love to love and drag it into deck A. Open the mixer by pressing on the square right next to the mixer and roll off some of the bass from Tina Charles. Not that it's a bassy track, but just so that both kicks doesn't interfere with each other. Start the Adele loop and then press play on deck A to start Tina Charles. Yes, it fits like a glove. Perfect beat for that old school track. Better stop playing that before YouTube's please give me a ticket for violating the copyright. Let's do the other way around. Put a snippet of an a cappella on top of a track called In Loop. I know just the perfect example. Adjust the volume of the sampler panel, panel so the sampler isn't too loud. Let's skip to the part that I have already marked out and then start the track. Then press play. It's a perfect match. So this is it about the sampler in Rekordbox DJ. And now I hope you start using it. And if you recorded some good mixing with it, please post the link in the description below so we all can listen and enjoy. See you next time. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please subscribe to this channel. And if you have a request for a future tips and tricks or tutorial here on LoopsFX, or have a product that you want me to test and review, please send an email to hello at loopsfx.com. See you next time. <clears throat> In this episode of... Why? And then they and then they go bananas with it. What they doesn't every time I post a new, uh, so I'm bribing you to subscribe to my channel. I'm almost a little pause now. And if you want to request or have something that I want, bam. And if you. Future, future, future. Hello, the possibilities are endless.